I bought these four broken computer monitors just to see if I could fix them. So let's get them plugged in and see what's wrong. This video is sponsored by Wondershare Filmora. More on them in a minute. So number one is this Asus 24 inch LED monitor. I actually got it powered up before I started the video and found that this one had a broken screen. So we're not gonna spend any time on this. Unfortunately, generally speaking, broken screens on monitors just aren't fixable because it's super hard most of the time to find the exact panel that goes in the monitor. And even if you can, usually it's so expensive that you might as well just go out and buy a new monitor. So we have to start this video off on a non-fixable one, but let's move on to number two and see if we can fix that one. Number two is this HP 25 inch display. HP 25F, manufactured in May of 2019. So we do have power to the unit. Let's try and turn it on and see what it does. So when I try and press the power button, just nothing happens. So we get power to the board, but we get no power to the actual display. I think it's time to take it apart and let's see what's going on inside. So I've never really messed with monitors before. I think I've maybe fixed one or two, but not really anything serious at all. So this is basically all new to me, especially with these newer monitors. So hopefully I'll be able to fix them for you and this won't be just a boring no fix video. Now I think on this one, we can just take this black cover off and I think the board is right under there. That's where I wanna start because I think that's probably where the problem originates. I almost ripped that ribbon cable. Okay, good, we got that off. So this is the main board right here. Then we have a little, uh, I'm assuming like LED driver board down here. But let's take a look inside here and see what this board looks like first. And here we have the board. Let's get the panel out of the way so we can have a look at the top side of this board. And here we go. First thing I'm gonna do is just take a look at the whole board and see if we see any obvious problems. Well, that was easy. If you look right down here by this chip, you notice a large black spot on this leg right here. It tells me there's something wrong with this chip. Let's get it under the microscope and take a closer look. Yeah, this is definitely a problem. We've got a little crack in the chip right here and this leg is just totally burned out. I don't know if this is the only problem, but this chip for sure needs to be replaced. Luckily, I was able to find some of these chips brand new on AliExpress, so I'll be able to replace this one with a brand new one. First, you're gonna see me put on something called Flux. Flux just helps the solder melt. I'll be using my hot air soldering station to melt the solder, then remove this broken chip. Then I'll keep the board heated up and install the brand new chip. Once the new chip's installed, we'll take another look just to make sure all the solder joints look good. Then we'll install this back into the monitor and see if this fixes it. So this chip is soldered on all correctly and the board is all nice and clean. Let's take a quick look at that old chip. You can see how this has just totally been burned away right here. The underside mostly looks fine. Oh, there we go. That leg is just totally, almost completely burned off. Wow. So clearly a lot of current went through this chip on this leg. I'm gonna go ahead and look at the board and just make sure there's no obvious fuses blown or anything like that. Assuming there isn't, I'm gonna get it installed back into the monitor. Then we can turn it on and see if anything explodes. Now, I don't see anything actually marked as a fuse on this. I also don't see anything else that looks like it's overheated or anything like that. So I'm hoping, and I think that might be the only problem. I also have four more of those chips, so I think it's worth taking a little bit of a risk and installing this back in and plugging it in and see what happens. Before we continue, let's talk about Filmora by Wondershare. Wondershare Filmora is a simple video editor that empowers your storytelling. Filmora simplifies advanced features like keyframing and motion tracking to save you time and effort. It's also very easy to do audio ducking and color matching. They offer creative transitions, filters, titles, and motion elements that are all exclusive to Filmora. To make these things even faster, Filmora offers easy keyboard shortcuts. You can use a green screen to change backgrounds and create special effects, and they even offer multiple screens for a unique way to tell your story. One of my favorite features of Filmora is they offer different tools to tailor your video to the different platforms. So they make it easy to put your videos on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, or any of the other common social platforms. Filmora also offers different pricing plans depending on how you use it, so no matter what type of user you are, Filmora's got a great price for you. I'll leave my link right in the description that'll take you right there if you want to check it out. Now let's get back to these broken monitors. Here we go, plugging into power. Okay, it is plugged into power, but will it power on? Oh no. 
So let's get this thing back apart and see if we can figure out what we're missing. So the good news right away is that it looks like nothing exploded on the board. It looks like this chip is still good as far as I can tell. There's no burn spots on the legs like on the old one. So that's good news, but we got to figure out why it's not turning on. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to hook this to power and then just see if anything changes now that we have the other cables disconnected. This cable just goes to this power button right here. So let's see what happens when I have everything else disconnected. Okay, we get the LED there showing that there is power to the board. I'm pretty sure this LED is also supposed to light up when you have power to this board. Because this is the on button and usually near the on button there is like a status LED and there's definitely not any there. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is hook up a thermal camera and just see if that gives us any hints. Definitely no hints there. This entire board is just basically dead. So that tells me that power is not getting very far from where it comes in. If power is getting up to these other components, there would be, at least be a little bit of heat on the board and there's just nothing. So I think we must have some sort of major issue down in this section of the board. So I'm gonna start taking a look there. So I was able to pull up a data sheet for this chip. And after looking at the data sheet and then checking the voltages on the board, there were two voltages that the chip did not have that it looked like it was supposed to. So I decided to just replace this chip again in case the first chip I put on here was faulty and I have this replaced. So let's plug it in and see if that fixed it. So I have the power button board right here. I'm gonna plug this into power and let's see what happens. Oh, here we go. Look at that. Okay, there we go, that's what we need. Hopefully that's all this took to fix it is just replacing that chip again. I hate it when I get brand new chips that don't work because that just takes so long for me to go in and diagnose. And sometimes I just replace them even if I don't know for sure they're bad just because it's not too hard to do. So let's get this board back in this monitor and see if maybe that fixed it. Okay, so I'm gonna plug it in over here. We're gonna look for this light over here and then we'll see if it'll turn on. Okay, it is plugged in. Okay, we do have a light there. Okay, are we ready for this? Let's see what happens. Oh, here we go. It's already starting up. There we go, yeah! So next we have this Samsung monitor. I'm not sure what size it is. It is pretty huge though. It's pretty hard to fit on my desk. I've already got the back off, obviously. So let's plug it in and see what it does. Okay, do we have any lights anywhere? I don't see, oh wait, here we go. We do have lights. So it's already lighting up. Um, See if I can figure out a way to flip this thing over so we can see better. Oh, there we go. It's already showing something on the screen. So I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this one back together. I'm gonna test it off camera, hook it up to a computer and see if everything's fine. If I find something wrong, I'll come back and finish it on video. But for now, let's move on to monitor number four. So clearly the first issue we have to deal with here is this. This is just disgusting. Somebody put like a some sort of packing label just right on this screen. I'm gonna fast forward through this cause this could take a while. So next I'm gonna use a mixture of about 50-50 water and isopropyl alcohol mix. I normally use 99% isopropyl alcohol, but I wanna use a less concentrated mixture because these screens do have a coating on them and I would really like to preserve that coating. So I'm gonna try this and see if it works. I'm just gonna try it on a small area first and see if that'll get that adhesive off. And if it seems to be working, then I'll try to remove the rest of the adhesive. And that actually looks pretty good. I don't think it is removing any of the coating. So next I'm just gonna basically cover this whole area with this mixture of isopropyl alcohol and water and then just work on scrubbing all the adhesive off. Now, as you've probably noticed, I'm putting a lot of this mixture on here. My goal here is to put it on all of the adhesive and just kind of let it soak in and hopefully get under the adhesive a little bit. That makes it a lot easier to scrub up and the easier it is, the less damage we're gonna be doing to the screen. So you can see how much I've gotten up right here. That's actually working pretty well, I think, but before I do all the work to get all of this off, I wanna make sure this panel actually works. So let's turn it over and get it apart and see if we can figure out what's going on. So let's plug it in and I'll show you what it's doing. So we do get a light on the back indicating that there is power to the board, but when we try and turn it on, just nothing happens. So if I press the power button, we should see this display lighting up 
and it is not lighting up at all. So let's try, let's try unplugging one of the backlights and see what happens. Okay, now power, still nothing. Wait a second. Watch this right here. That does power on, okay. Let's plug it back in and see what happens. Okay, now we'll power on and nothing. Let's try unplugging this one, okay. Now right here's a little hole, let's see. Oh, we got light there already. So when I unplug each side of the backlight, then the other side will work. So what would cause that? I have no idea. Let's have a look at this board and see if we can find any burn components or anything. So I don't see anything burned or any indications of any faulty parts on this board. So I'm just kind of doing some voltage testing on this chip and just see if it's putting out any voltage. We see this pin right here has 19 volts. I think that's probably about what the backlights would take. And if we test the backlight connector, we've got 2.3 volts there. 2.3 volts there, 18 volts there, and 18 volts there. So it seems like this chip is putting out the correct amount of voltage. The problem though is when you try and power it on, that's when it's not putting the correct amount of voltage out. Now with this hooked back up, let's recheck these voltages. So we still have 19 there. Let's disconnect this and unhook one of these connectors and see what changes. Okay, and the backlight is turned on now. 53 volts there. Okay, so what's happening is something on this board is boosting the voltage to 53 volts. And when with both of these plugged in, we're not getting that boost. So that's the next thing we have to figure out here. I'm kind of guessing it may be one of these little chips down here. I'm not really sure though. Got to take a better look at this board and see if we can figure out what's doing that. So I was able to find the data sheet for this chip. So let's start doing some testing. The first thing I want to do is check the enable pin to make sure this chip is being enabled. That's pin five, so let's see if it is. So this is pin one right here designated by this little circle. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. We have 3.1 volts and the data sheet says pin five should be above 2.4. That will enable the chip. So the chip is being enabled. So next we're gonna check pin seven, which is the output pin. This is the pin that outputs voltage to this MOSFET right here. We have 1.9 volts. The data sheet says this pin outputs high voltage and in parentheses it says five volts. I'm not sure if that needs to be five volts or if the 1.9 is fine. So that's something that could be a problem. We still do get 53 volts on the backlight, even with this pin seven only putting out 1.9, but that still does make me wonder. Let's check the VCC pin. That is pin eight, and it should be a five volt output. So pin eight is right here, and we have five volts there. And then let's just check pin nine. This is the voltage supply input, and we have 19 volts. So really the main thing that I don't know on this board is how this 53 volts is generated that we get on this backlight circuit. Now it is possible like one of these other chips could be generating that, but I checked those and I don't see any output of 53 volts on those either. I think at this point, the best thing to do is change this chip. I did find a board on eBay that had this same chip. It's not the same board, but it did have the same chip. So I'm gonna replace that and let's just see if that'll fix it for us because if this doesn't, there's just not really anywhere else for me to go here. And now with that chip soldered back on, let's plug it in. And now let's check for backlight when I plug it in. There's a backlight hole right there. So that should come on if the board is working. Usually takes just a second to turn on, but we're getting nothing. And I'm getting 31 volts and dropping on the enable for the LEDs. So the LEDs don't have enough voltage to turn on. Like I said before, I can't find anywhere on this board where the 53 volts is being created. So that just gives me really nothing to go on. So at least for now, I'm gonna have to call this monitor unfixable. We were able to fix one out of the four and the other one was already working when I tested it. So out of the four, we do have two working, which is good. I'm not giving up all hope on this monitor yet. I think we might still be able to fix it. I'm just not sure what else to check at this point. If you think you know, put it down in the comment section so I can test it. I'll put a link for Wondershare Filmora in the description if you wanna check it out. 
Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good one.